praise. He's due every 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 praise. Some of y'all still ain't calling. Except the church. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Wow. NFL is back. Yeah. Yeah. NBA is back. Yeah. Baseball is back. Yeah. Come on, they say they got they got lines at Walmart again. Come on. Yeah. Come on, everything is back. Watch this. Even the club yeah. is back. Come on, come on now. Even the club is back. Yeah, I know because I know some church folks they don't. Yes.
Come on, how many really love to praise him? The Bible says where two or three are gathered. I think we got more than two or three. Can we just stay and bring that back? Let us I love to praise him one more time. I love him.
you did not delay to come back and get right back on your post. That the Lord is pleased with your faithfulness. We're just grateful that we serve a prayer answering God. Uh, we are preparing to come to the altar, but as we prepare today, uh, there are a few names that I want to call out. I uh, want to call out the name of Daphne Wright and Keith Blaine uh, in the loss of their brother this week. Homegoing service will be here at Second Mount Olive. Uh, the viewing beginning at 9 and the service is beginning at 11. So we want to do what we can to support uh, that family, make sure that we put our arms around them and let them know that we absolutely love them. Amen? Amen. Uh, on last week, uh, the husband of Sister Bio, uh, Brother Marvin, went to surgery, is out of surgery and doing well. Uh, we praise the name of the Lord for what he is doing in the midst of uh, this congregation. Uh, do me a favor, if you got a list, uh, keep on that list. The brother of our very own Reverend Foreman, uh, brother's name is Henry Foreman. And we, are, we are keeping him lifted uh, as he's still hospitalized at the moment. And we're expecting the Lord to do great uh, and mighty things. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to keep those uh, names lifted as we continue to go through this week. Now, maybe you're here and you need a special prayer. Uh, this is our period where we come to the altar. We, we fill this place with the cares of this world. For the Bible says to cast all of our cares on him. For truly, he careth for us. And maybe it's not you that's standing in the need of prayer. But maybe it's somebody on your heart or mind. And you want to bring them to the altar and lift them up to God that God would do what you cannot do. We're going to ask that you would come to the altar. Amen. As you're coming to the altar, if you have a special request that I've not received, you can just call it out as the, at the altar as you come. The Lord is so wise that before you even open your mouth, he knows exactly what you need. And he's already got it worked out. He already has it worked out. If that's you, we want you to meet us at the altar today.
nobody else to call. When we search over the pages of our life, we realize that nobody can do what you've done. Nobody can keep us. Nobody can heal us. Nobody can break us out. Nobody can restore us. Nobody can heal us. Nobody can keep our mind. Nobody can provide for us. Nobody can do what you do. You are the awesome God. That's why we praise you. That's why we bless you. That's why we come this morning. Because we know who we have. We know what we have in you. We know, God, that there's nobody that can match your power. There's nobody, God, that is able to reckon next to you. And so we call on you this morning. We stand at this altar. We all have needs. We have needs. We have situations. We have circumstances. We have children that need to be healed. Loved ones need to be healed. Minds need to be restored. Homes need to be brought back together. Marriages need to be healed. God, we need you. We need you in here. We need you. The enemy thought we quit by right now. The enemy thought we was going to take down by right now. But they don't know that greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And so God, we come now. And as we stand at the altar, we lay our all on it, God. Every situation, every burden, every circumstance, every dilemma, every trauma, every issue, everything we lay it at the altar and we say, God, have your way. Have your way in us. Have your way through us. Have your way, God. Have your way in our life. We surrender. Lay our all on the altar. We lay our all on the altar. And God, before we leave here today, hey, you thought enough about us to send us fresh manna from heaven, to give us a fresh word that we'll know how to govern this life. God, we ain't gonna lie to you. Our faith is strong, but it's hard out here. But we put our trust in you. We put our confidence in you. We put our assurance in you. In you we live. In you we move. And in you we have our being. Now God, we're not being selfish when we ask you to bless us. We're not being selfish. Because I just don't want you to bless me. I want you to bless my neighbor. Bless the one standing next to me. Bless the one standing behind me. Bless the one to my right. Bless the one to my left. Bless us right now, God. Bless us individually, God. And bless us all together. Because God, we know that you are more than able. You are more than able. Now unto him that can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, God. So we ask now, God, that you would just have your way in us. Have your way in us, God. Have your way in us, God. Now, God, if those who are here left a loved one at home that is sick in their body. God, we don't have to ask you to go because you're already there. We just ask you to touch and heal and have mercy. Hey, have mercy, God. And God, before we even dismiss this prayer, we pray for the White House. We pray for the senators and the Congress. And we pray for governors and mayors. And we pray for police officials. And we pray for every official that's making decisions on behalf of these your people that we would live peaceable and quiet lives. We pray for our communities and our neighborhoods. We pray for our schools, God. Pray over our children, teachers, administrators. We pray in the name of Jesus. How we need you. And we can't make it without you. And now God, we clap our hands because it's done. We lift our voice because it's done. 
We shout because we got the victory. We claim it. 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 In Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name that we have the victory. Let us all together say, Amen. A few things I want to emphasize with Dominion. Uh, number one, we started uh, selling our men's t-shirts on yesterday for Fifth Sunday. All right, uh, Fifth Sunday we will be in our Iron Sharp and Iron men's t-shirts. So if you have not purchased your shirt, please get those monies to me today after service. I have to put in the order today. So I need to collect the rest of those funds. So please see me, ma'am, if you want to get it for your husband, your son, your brother, sir. If you're here today and you want a shirt, we are wearing those together on Fifth Sunday. Amen. All right. So tell your neighbor, I got it. All right. Number two. Number two. On next Sunday. The men, we know that the youth are in action, but we as a sign of solidarity with the men's ministry are repping our teams on next Sunday. On next Sunday, whatever your team me is men, wear your team shirt. Now, uh, I'm asking uh, Pastor Bailey, he will be out preaching that Sunday to send us an officer from uh, Harris County because I heard some people saying they were wearing weekly shirts and some people saying they were wearing Yates shirts amen and we need to make sure we don't tear the Lord's church up amen amen so we want to come out we want to have a good time it is rep your team next Sunday men so whatever shirt it is that you want to wear uh, wear that and rep your team and we just expect to come out and have a good time. Amen.
Amen. God is good and worthy to be praised. Uh, if you're able, why don't you stand to your feet? Meet me at the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 18. Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 18. I want to examine verses 1 through 6. As we met with the men and young men on yesterday, this, this message loomed large in my heart. I want to share it. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse number 1 through 6. When you have it, say, I got it. If you're still looking, say, wait for me. I'm waiting. I'm reading from the New American Standard. It reads, The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the Potter's house, and there I will announce my words to you. So I went down to the Potter's house, and there he was making something on the wheel. But the vessel that he was making of clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter so he remade it into another vessel as it pleased the potter to make then the word of the lord came to me saying am i not able house of israel to deal with you as this potter does declares the lord behold like the clay in the hand of the potter so are you in my hand house of israel Grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. If you're not ashamed, look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh neighbor. With God's help. With God's help. And your prayers. And your prayers. The preacher's going to preach about it. I'm in his hands. Amen. Amen. Will you bring me up just a little bit? Amen. Amen. There we go. I did not spend most of my childhood uh, with my father, but there were some things about him that stick out in my mind. Uh, I can remember waiting on him to get home to play basketball or ought to just play video games or wrestle around on the floor but there's there was one thing that my daddy would do every now and again that didn't make sense but it meant something to me uh, maybe your daddy was like uh, my daddy a kind of superman and every now and then he would grab me uh, underneath my arms and when he would grab me underneath my arms he would simply toss me in the air and when he would toss me in the air I would be suspended there as if on a roller coaster almost out of breath until he caught me again in his hand it would appear that that would be a traumatic experience to be suspended above air not knowing if you're going to fall or if he's going to mishandle me but something strange happened as soon as he caught me I would look at him and say daddy do it again and he would take me and toss me up in the air and I would be suspended in air and lose my breath as fearful that I might fall fall and injure myself but he would catch me again in his hand the thing is y'all I am afraid of heights I'm not enamored by height in the least bit but there was something about knowing that no matter how chaotic things got when I was in the air that I could depend on him to catch me in his hands is there anybody other than me that can look at your life and say when things get hard to handle that you just glad that you got a father that knows how to catch you in his hands that when life 
is so chaotic that you don't know what you're going to do. You don't know how it's going to go. You don't know how you're going to make it that you just learned over the years that when you're suspended above air and you are about to lose your mind that your God is able to catch you in his hands that when you're broke and you don't know where the next meal is coming from when you got no month than money and you don't know how you're going to make it you serve a God that knows how to catch you in his hands when everything around you is going wrong it's like Murphy's Law the kids are acting up the car is out of gas the job is messed up the phone is disconnected the cable is off you find consolation in knowing God knows how to catch you in his hands so it was with the children of Israel, they were suffering from a condition called sin and they were in need of salvation. And don't look at the children of Israel like that because some of us got the same condition that they have. They would start out good with God. They would backslide and turn into sin and beg God for forgiveness and God would bring them out. And after a few days, they would fall back in sin, they would beg for forgiveness and God would bring them out. I'm telling your testimony. You be doing real good. You'll backslide into sin and God will bring you out and you'll beg for forgiveness. I need two more witnesses. You'll be doing real good. You'll fall into sin. You'll cry out to the Lord and the Lord will get you out. Some of y'all still ain't telling the truth. You'll be doing real good. You'll fall into sin. You'll cry out to the Lord And the Lord will bring you out I'm just calling to testify About myself That every now and then I need to know that I'm in God's hands I love it I got a few things that I want to leave And download into your computer And I'll let you go The very first thing this text is tailored to teach us is that the first thing is the vessel in God's hands is incomplete. The Bible says in verse number three, so I went down to the potter's house and there he was, the New American Standard says he was making something on the wheel. The King James says he was rotting a work on the wheel. The message says he was working away on the wheel. All of those are saying the same thing. That while I'm in God's hands, the reason I don't look like I'm supposed to look like is because the vessel is still incomplete. It's because God ain't done with it yet. I know I still curse a little bit. Y'all pray for me. Because God ain't done with me yet. I know you step on shoes and I ain't supposed to holler but I find myself hollering because God ain't through with me yet. I still got some rough edges but I'm in his hands. The vessel was incomplete. He said it was in the hand of the potter and the potter was working out. I love the New American Standard. He said he was working out something on the wheel. It don't even tell us what it was. He was working on something. But whatever he was working on, it's clear that it wasn't finished yet. The work was incomplete. Now, now, me and my wife, we've been married a long time. We have a tradition that once a year, around anniversary time, we go to the embassy suites and we hang out for a weekend doing Christian stuff. You know, get us a little acceptable beverage, uh, get us some sparkling water in our wine flutes. You know how us good Baptists do. We're just hanging out, having a good time. So we get there on Friday night and we have a good time and we say good. 
good. We're going to sleep in in the morning. But bright and early on Saturday, it was about 6.30 in the morning. We could hear hammers and jackhammers and all kind of things going on. My wife said, baby, go down there and see what's happening. We're supposed to be relaxing on our anniversary. I went down to the desk and I said, what seems to be the problem? I see that you got uh, partitions up and it's dust all over the place and you got hammers and nails going on and we trying to relax. She said, I'm so, so sorry, sir. I can give you a rain check, but I can't stop the work because whenever you are going to remake something, it always get messy. Come here for a moment. The reason your life is a mess right now is because God ain't done with the work and whenever you remake something, it always gets messy. Can I tell you the reason some of our lives 
are in shambles. It's because when God looks at you and you ain't like he wants you, he knocks it down and starts all over again. You with a man you ain't supposed to be with, he knocks it down and starts all over again. You at the job you wasn't called to, he knocks it down and starts all over again. The pilot is patient. But the pilot has a plan. Dexter, here's where we get hurt. The powder, although he's patient and he has a plan, he's not concerned about your pain. He's concerned about the picture and some of you are frustrated with your life because every time you make two steps forward it appears that you're taking two steps backwards but maybe that's just the Lord having the clay on the wheel and saying no that's not how I want it let me make them start all over again and can I just rush to tell you that when you see pottery being made if you're going to get to the finished product before you can get a base you got to take that clay and you got to put it in the oven and heat it up so that it can get hard. You want to know why your life is hot? It's because the Lord is strengthening you and making you able to bear what you're into. The Lord is not concerned about your pain. I got one more point, but before I get there, can I just tell somebody that the reason that things are not going the way that they should be in your life is because you're clay. I'm going to say it again because I know some of y'all didn't get it. The reason that it's not working out the way that you want it to go because you ain't nothing but clay. See, you thought that you was all of that and a bag of chips and a diet coke, but if you really know what clay is, clay ain't nothing but a certain kind of dirt and water. And, but when that gets in the master's hands, the Lord is able to do something great with water and dirt. Is there anybody other than me that can testify that with God I'm nothing, but in his hands I can do great things? I'm, I'm done. The vessel is incomplete. It's still on the wheel. The vessel is imperfect. It's marred. Uh, that word marred is S-H-K-O-T-H. In the, in the Hebrew, it means ruined. Rotten. Useless. I need to say that because God needs to get something out of us, but some of us got too much pride to let the Lord use us how he wants to use us. So I need to let you know how the Bible says we really are. He said uh, they are marred in the hands of the potter, which means they are ruined, they are rotten, they are useless. But somehow when God puts my useless self in the hands of a mighty God, he has a way of working out a work. In me. I'm glad y'all God ain't done with me yet. I, I see y'all tired of me. Let me close. The vessel is incomplete. It is imperfect but verse number five and six the vessel is in position. He says as the clay is in the potter's hands. So is the children of Israel in my hands. I need to tell somebody that although you are incomplete, although you are imperfect, the good news from the cross is that you are in God's hands. I, I thought I would get more help than that, but maybe you don't know whose hands you in. I'm in the hands of the one that turned the Red Sea into a highway. I, I'm in his hands. I'm the one that rained down manna from heaven because his children got hungry. I'm in his hands. I'm in the hands of the one that took a little boy's lunch and turned it into a luncheon. I'm in his hands. I'm in the hands of the one that went nothing 
nothing else could help. They nailed his hands to a cross for my salvation. Is there anybody here that can testify? I'm in the Lord's hand. I'm in his hands. I was trying to go to my seat, but I just got to celebrate one time. My Jesus, they led from judgment hall to judgment hall. They were carrying him on trumped up charges. And one Friday, they nailed Jesus to the cross. They put spikes in his feet. They put spikes in his hands. He hung his head. And there he died. Is there anybody here that can testify that my God stayed? Grave on Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday. They told me that the devil went down to the grave and asked the grave, Grave, do you have it? The grave said, I got it. He came back a little while longer, and Jesus had got up. He asked the grave, I thought you had it. The grave said, I had it. But earlier, Who is 
because we're hopeless but because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness father we're standing at your altar because 
for some of us, God, we're not just here for prayer, but we're here because we sense an assignment, God. We sense, Father, that there's something that you're calling us to do, God. And wow, we don't know exactly what it is, Father. We do know that there's a void in our life that only God can feel, Father. And we're pressing towards you, God, to just tell you yes, Father. We don't know the details of the assignment, but we say yes to your will and yes to your way, Father. We've held up coming before, Father, because we got scared and got filled with doubt, Father. But right now at the altar, God, we say yes, God. We say yes to the assignment that is on our life, Father, and we say use us for your own good pleasure. Now, Father, there's some married couples that are standing at the altar. We know that the enemy would like nothing more to break down the marriage because when he breaks down the marriage, he breaks down the family. And when he breaks down the family, he breaks down community. And since this is the oldest ordinance in the Bible, we pray now, Father, that you would secure the marriages that are at this altar, Father. That as they stand hand in hand, Father, that you would root the devil out of their life and out of their situation. That you would give them victory in their finances that you would give them victory with their children, that you would give them victory in their relationship. We're going to see signs and wonders. Now, Father, there are a few in this altar for healing. We serve Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals, Father. And we decree and declare, Father, that you're going to begin to do what nobody else can do. We know what the doctors have said. We know what the diagnosis and the prognosis is. But we still need to hear from Jesus. We believe Jesus has the final say. Now begin to heal, God. The Bible says, Father, that you would do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think, Father. We're praying that you would supersede the doctor and that you would heal the bodies of these that are at your altar. Heal God. Deliver God. Set free God. Move God. Now, Father, lastly, there are a few people here that are not broken in their bodies, but broken in spirit, Father. There are a few people that are just a step away from throwing in the towel, God. I pray that you would grab them right now in the spirit, Father, and that you would bring them back to you and let them know that everything is going to be all right. Let them know that their tears are not shed in vain, but that God sees their trials and their tribulations, and God is answering their prayer as we pray together right now, God. Move in their life, God and answer every prayer. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray and we ask it all. And the people of God say it. Amen. If you, if you believe God is doing it, clap your hands as you head back to your seats. quick testimony and then once we have done that we'll be ready to dismiss my church family on Vanessa my testimonies is my baby daughter she just turned 29 years old on Patriot County she was a TDC lieutenant. Yeah. Got eight and a four year old. Her husband was two years younger than she was. It was a lot of father play in his. I'd rather not go off into it, but 
I want my eight-year-old grandson to be praying for it because the baby was his, the kind of way it was kind of thing I read. And he was beat. He was thought. He was spit on. He was played with. But he was left. He had nothing to do. My spirit is broken. Jesus. 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 <laughs> Jesus. Help me pray. We trust in the Lord and lean not to our own and lean not to our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge you and you will direct our path. Father, we need you today. We need you in a real and in a personal way, Father. We need you to show yourself strong and mighty, Father. Father, we need you to show yourself strong and mighty as it relates to those children, Father, that even where they are, God. You might be able to put your hands upon them, Father, and grow them up in the admonition of the Lord that they still might be used by God. We recognize, Father, that although the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, that you have come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Father, we cry out to you today. 
and we place the totality of our issues in your hand. We recognize that where we fall short, that our God is able to supply. Now we pray that you touch in a mighty way. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, let your spirit wash over her, God, and dry her tears, Father. We believe that you can do it. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray and we call it done in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Come on, give God praise, will you? We're ready all over the building. Would you stand? Do me a favor. When we dismiss you, put your arms around her. Encourage her. She needs uh, the church to be the church today. Let's do all that we can uh, to show ourselves Christian. Amen. Yeah. Did not the Lord move in this place today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Can we give God praise for our new member? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Man of God. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm excited about what the Lord is doing uh, in the life of you and your wife. I believe that y'all are going to be a great part of the future of Second Mount Island and we are exceedingly glad. Amen. 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 Where's the other young man that came up? Where is it? Right there. Yeah. God's got to work for you. Yeah. We, we, I saw that the first time you came and uh, I believe you're getting close and there's going to come a time when you won't be able to resist what God is trying to do in your life. And I believe it's closer now than it's ever been. And when God gets started, you're going to be amazed at what the Lord is able to do. So I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for what God is doing in your life. Amen. All right, are we ready? Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us before himself with exceeding joy. To the only wise and true God be honor, power, dominion, and glory. Now henceforth and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.